Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman, and in this video, we're going to do Section 6 for Aromatic Systems Part 2. And this is the final section to wrap up the chapter. And what this is known as is synthetic strategies, or multi-step uh, synthetic strategies. And what, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to take a benzene, or some derivative of benzene, and turn it into other groups like or other products so maybe like having three attachments onto a benzene or uh, taking a phenol which is a benzene with an OH and doing something to it so we're gonna learn all about the rules related to that now the best way to learn this section is to actually go in different type of scenarios so I'm gonna go through scenarios with you and what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn all the key points by going through these scenarios together okay so there's about eight or nine scenarios and once we're finished then we're gonna wrap up by doing about ten problems together tons and tons of examples and sub problems and so then you'll you'll feel really good about this for your exam okay let's get started let's talk about the first scenario and or the rule that we're gonna deal with and this right here is simply uh, describing what happens and by the way actually let me point one more thing out so it's very simple if you have a benzene if you have let's say a benzene and it has one group Z then it's very easy to know what happens right if I add something let's say E plus into this we don't care what's coming in what we care is what's on right to decide if it's an ortho and para or meta product right so if this is a deactivator then meta is the major product if it's not a halogen Whereas if it's an activator or halogen, orthopara is the product, right? So we, it's very easy to figure out with one thing what the actual product will be. But what happens when you have more than one thing, let's say we have Y and Z, and now we have to figure out where does E plus go? Well, now this is what we're going to do now. So this is very simple. We've been talking about this top scenario in the previous videos. But what we're going to do now is focus on this scenario or even more groups off of benzene. So this has to listen specifically to one or the other, and there are different rules to figure out which one it's going to be. That's what we're going to do now. Okay? So let's get started with the rules. The first rule says that ortho and para win over meta. So when you have an example like this, well, this is an ortho para director, it's an alkyl group, whereas nitro is a meta director, right? And by the way, I'm going to just assume that you know your ortho para and meta directors. If not, you have to go back to the video where I broke it down and I taught it all to you. At this point, I'm assuming you've got it down and we're just going to work through it quickly, all right? So I'm not going to keep explaining why it's ortho para or meta, but there's plenty of video support uh, prior to this video to give you that information, right? Section um, three and four, the past two videos. Okay, so there's ortho para, there's meta. Now the rule is, is that when you have an ortho para, it wins over meta, no matter what the ortho para is, okay? Now, I left over the arrow blank because I want to make it clear, it does not matter what's coming in. It could be BR2 or it could be HNO3, or anything it doesn't matter what's coming in it will always listen to the ortho para director over meta okay so for my example I guess I'll use BR2 FEBR3 but again it didn't really matter what I used over this arrow now one thing that we do know is that we can't go through Friedel crafts right because if you have a meta director there's no way you can alkylate or acylate anymore so that I couldn't do, but any other the ones that will work will still, you know, we could throw over the arrow. Anyway, so BR is coming in and it's going to listen to the methyl. So that means it's going to go either here or there. Now, notice that this is the ortho position on top and this is the para position. Here's ortho as well. So you might say, well, why didn't I go here? Well, in reality, you can do these three options. And let me show you what the third one looks like. So you can have it like this where there's a BR here and a nitro here or you could do what I pointed out which I'll show you now so we could have a BR here or a BR there 
Now it turns out that this right here, having three things line up, is never going to happen. Never. Okay? You cannot do that because of steric issues. So although this looks like it can happen, it really does not. Now notice that what I did is I have ortho to the B, to the methyl here or para to the methyl and I just ignored the nitro. Doesn't matter what nitro wants. And again, this will never happen. I'm going to exit out because you never line up three things in a row. Not if there's other options. So in other words, you see how I can have it here or there? That means that I have other options. It would never do this. Okay, so hopefully that's clear, and you must remember this, and you'll see why as we go on to the next set of rules, or coming up soon. All right, now let's do this one here. So again, it's not about activator or deactivator. This rule, the first rule, is about ortho para directing over meta. So this is ortho para, this is meta. What does that mean? That means that BR wins, right? We're going to listen to BR. We're not going to listen to nitro, right? So if I put over this arrow, let's say... Um, in this case, uh, H2SO4, H+, plus. it doesn't matter. And by the way, H+, plus means, um, well, actually, sorry, let me just write H2SO4. If I write HNO3, um, I can write H2SO4 under the arrow or just H+. Plus. So if you ever need an acid, you can write just H+. Plus. But here we want to show the H2SO4. Now, remember that I said you don't have to write SO3. You don't have to do that. Even if I don't write SO3, you know it's going to be there. That's what happens with H2SO4. It becomes SO3. Okay? So this right here is all I need to write. And now I'm going to have an SO3H come in. So it can either go ortho SO3H or para SO3H to the bromine. Now, again, you don't want to line three things up. So I'm not even going to bother drawing it because of this rule up here. Right, so I'm going to write up here the rule, never line three groups up unless there is no other option. Okay, that's it. Never line three, th three groups up unless there's no other option. So I'm not even going to bother with the third option. Now you might say, which one's major, which one's minor? That's not even something we have to worry about. So don't when you have more than two groups, you don't have to worry about which one's better than the other. They both happen, and you could either draw them both out, or if you, let's say, specifically needed one over the other as you're going through synthesis, you could do it. You could just ignore the other option that you don't need. Okay? So just keep that in mind. You'll see as we go further on with this what I mean. But at any rate, right now, just draw them both out because we're asking for all options. So this next rule says that the stronger activator wins over the weaker activator. So now, when you have two activators, that's the rule you listen to. Now remember, what does it mean to be strong? It means you have a lone pair. So nitrogen has a lone pair. Carbon doesn't. So this is the winner right here. We're going to listen to the nitrogen. We're not listening to carbon because carbon is a weak activator. Remember. Any atom with a lone pair is a stronger activator, okay? And then we know the rest of our chart. Like I said, I'm not really focusing on that right now. Let me pull up the chart here uh, in this video so that you have it. I'll put it right here, I guess. Um, you know, this way at least you have it available to you. But I just don't want to focus on that right now. Um, so here's your chart. I'll leave it here for you guys, okay? So it's available. All right. So notice how on top, nitrogen wins because it's the stronger activator. Um, this is the strongest activator, and this carbon is the weakest. So here's your trend that you should be familiar with. But again, I'm not, I'm not going to go back to this. I'm just assuming that you will go there if you need to. Okay? All right. So now to answer this question, it's an ortho para director, right? So we're going to go either, um, let's, let's do BR2 this time, FEBR3. So we're going to put a BR here or there. Okay, now think about what I did. Here are the two possibilities, but this one is not going to happen. And I hope you see why. You don't line up three groups. You never do that. So the answer is this right here. This is the one that will happen because there's no three groups lined up. So first thing I said to myself was, okay, this wins. 
and it's got to go ortho or para to it. Ortho's no good, so para is the winner. Okay, hopefully that's.